Well, I'm sure you've heard the news. This is it right here. I'll show you. Uh, ARK Invest. ARK Invest with Kathy Wood has announced that they purchased 500,000 shares of Roblox on opening day on the IPO of Roblox. It was just a couple days ago. So this is brand new news. ARK Invest officially bought Roblox on IPO, 500,000 shares. And this has startled a lot of people because Roblox isn't trading at a, a discount per se. It's actually trading at what a lot of people believe is a very lofty valuation. Currently, the company's market cap is around 40 to $45 billion. That's where ARK Invest was purchasing it at. So it has a very high market cap compared to a lot of other traditional long-standing gaming companies like Take-Two Interactive or Activision Blizzard, those type of companies. But Roblox is a little bit different of a company than those ones. It functions differently. It's not really the same type of gaming company. So in this video, we're going to be talking about Roblox and what I think of it. And I'm going to outline why I think that this gaming company is different than something like a Take-Two Interactive. So we'll be going over that. I'll give my thoughts on whether I'm following ARK Invest into this purchase or whether I'm staying out of it and watching it from the sidelines. So I'll tell you what I plan on doing with my portfolio. Another news item I want to look at is this little news item right here that was very disappointing to see. This one I was saddened when I saw it. Netflix is testing a crackdown on password sharing. Don't do this to me, Netflix. Read. Read, don't do this to me. We've all enjoyed sharing our password with family and friends for the past 10 years. Your stock has soared during this time. Uh, I, I'm saddened to hear this news. Now, investors are as well. They have not been happy about this news. Netflix today is down like 2%. Since I've really built up my position in Netflix, I have a very strong conviction of it. It's my largest position currently. And I believe in the future of this company. I think it's one of the best assets to own in the future. So uh, Netflix is a great company, but it's been under a lot of pressure recently. Now that they have this news of them cracking down on password sharing, they have news of the reopening of the economy. They think that the churn rate of Netflix is going to go up and they have all the competitors. There's a lot of downward pressure on Netflix stocks. So I'm going to visit this news as well. And I'll share my thoughts on the password sharing thing and why I don't think it's really a negative for Netflix stock. So I've, I've thought about this and I really don't think it will damage the stock in the long term. And I'll explain why. Now, before jumping into either of these, be sure to check out the Weeble link in the description. I'll also leave a pinned comment with it. They're just giving away free stocks. So it's hard to turn down free money. Every time that you guys sign up, you get two free stocks. I get one free stock. That's the agreement. And you get the two free stocks if you deposit $100. That's the only requirement. So you sign up, deposit $100, you get the free stocks, and then you can withdraw all the money and sell the stocks and keep the money. That's basically it. And it just gives them a chance to let other people try out their brokerage. The one that I've opened so far, the first one that I opened is called CGC. It was a $33 stock. And I looked this up. CGC is Canopy Growth Corporation. So that was the free stock that Webull decided to give me. It is a marijuana stock. Interesting. That's the first time I've owned a marijuana stock. So now I have that coming into my Webull account and it's valued at $33. So most of them that you get are somewhere between the range of like seven to 15 bucks. You can get one that's over a thousand dollars, but I think it's pretty rare. So anyways, if you want to try that out, there's a link in the description. There's really no strings attached. You deposit hundred dollars, you get two free stocks. Okay, now with that said, let's go ahead and jump into this news. ARK Invest buying 500,000 shares. The first thing I want to mention is you see you see articles like this, right? And it has the big share number, 500,000 shares. I think it's important to read into the fine print, okay? To read just a further, a little bit further down. And I know that that's a tough thing to do. Reading down past the headline of an article to the actual article itself. But if you do that, you actually reveal some more information. The position size is important. Always pay attention to the position size. That's super important. When you look at people buying shares of a company and saying, I'm, I'm buying this company, look to how big their conviction is with it. If it is a huge position, if it's like their top position in their portfolio, then they're very serious about it. That means that they, they are strongly convinced of this company. They strongly believe in it. If they put it as a very small percentage, like one to 2%, that usually means that they see potential. They're willing to put a bet on it, but they're not entirely convinced that this is the the company to put your life savings with. And maybe they believe that it's more risky, that the possible range of outcomes is more diverse, and therefore there's a bigger chance that they can lose money. So pay attention to the position size. A lot of the companies that I buy into, 
that I do think have large potential, but I also believe that they're more risky. Like DoorDash and Peloton, I have them as smaller positions than Amazon, Netflix, and Spotify. I believe stronger in Spotify, Netflix, Amazon, Facebook, PayPal than I do in Peloton and DoorDash. So I size the positions accordingly. That's the first thing I want to highlight here with this news. Yes, ARK Invest bought 500,000 shares, but what does that really mean? Well, that means that their position size is worth $36 million, which amounts to 0.47% of the fund. So it's not the biggest position in their fund. They are much more bullish on something like Tesla or Teladoc or some of their top holdings, but it's not an insignificant amount. $36 million is a lot of money. Half a percent is a good amount of allocation to this to this brand new holding. So let's go ahead and look at what Kathy Woods really decided to buy. For a better look at this game, I want to go over this article. I think it explains it very well. Um, I'll just read a couple of paragraphs from this. Uh, here's a fun statistic. Over half of U.S. kids under age 16 played Roblox in 2020. Over half of U.S. kids age 16 or under the age of 16, played Roblox in 2020. So it's quite popular, even though a lot of people don't know about it because it's mostly kids playing it and they don't really drive the news content. Um, but now they go into how everybody's reporting on it because it's now met the financial world. So we have the Wall Street Journal, CNN, the New York Times, all these different news reports reporting on it. So it's become very popular with the financial media over the past month. But what is Roblox? This is what we want to find out. Roblox is not a game. That's the first thing. Roblox is an online platform and storefront where users go to play games. Roblox is not a game. It is a place where people play games made by other developers. In this sense, it is more similar to a PC platform like Steam than it is to an online, an online children's game. So the first major mistake that people are making is when they compare a game to Roblox. Roblox isn't a game. It's a platform. You might have noticed that uh, Kathy Wood and ARK Invest love platforms. Platforms, like I've mentioned before, make a good investments. Uh, platforms aggregate people together in one place. They have an exchange of, of people that create something and people that consume something, and they take something in between. They take a margin between. You have Shopify. That's an online uh, platform where people create web stores, storefronts, their own little, uh, their own little store in the internet. And then they have the consumers, the customers, and then Shopify takes stuff in between. They take every every merchant trade that goes between it, they take a fee of it, plus they have a SaaS model for reoccurring revenue. Spotify is a platform. Shopify is a platform. Shopify is a platform for online retail. Spotify is a platform for music and audio entertainment. Uh, we have Roku. That's a platform for streaming, different apps that come through. All they do is aggregate it and let you listen to it or watch it on your, your TV. Uh, all these type of companies. YouTube, that's a platform. YouTube is just a platform where you have content creators like me create stuff. You have uh, viewers like you view it, and then you have YouTube share the revenue with you. So ARK Invest loves platforms. This is something that I've been saying for a while uh, because typically they make good investments. They usually are kind of deceiving how much money they make because most people consider something like Roblox just a game when it's clearly not a game, it's a platform. So that's the big distinction that I want to make off right off the bat there. In this sense, it's more similar to a PC platform Steam, if you're familiar with Steam games, than it is to any online children's game. What makes Roblox different from anything else in the gaming industry, including storefronts like Steam, is that all games are made by its users. On Roblox, the fun doesn't come from playing games, it comes from making games. These games are not normally, or they're not formally developed by Roblox Corporation, but by users of the platform. Currently, the official website boasts that its users have published over 20 million games on the platform. That is another huge distinction. So I see Roblox as almost an attempt to be a YouTube of gaming. That's very similar to what it is, if you think about it. Roblox is a platform where they give developers tools to create games, and then there's a, a customer base. There's a bunch of uh, gamers that are on it as well. And so you have a group of people that are creators. You have a group of people that are, are gamers, and then Roblox facilitates them interacting with each other. Roblox doesn't actually create any games. All they do is create the environment where gamer, gamers can connect with creators. And so every game on 
Roblox platform was created by a user. It's created by a customer. Very similar to the way YouTube works. YouTube isn't like Netflix where they're going out creating a bunch of originals. All they're doing is fa facilitating the viewers and the content creators. So that is what is, is a, a distinction between Roblox and a Take-Two Interactive. Take-Two Interactive is a studio developing games. They have thousands of developers, literally thousands of them that work overnight to create the games. Roblox has found a way to, to pretty much put that work on the customer. Roblox doesn't have to hire thousands of developers to create games and always stay on top of the trends. Their customers do that for them. That is a superior business model than something like Take-Two Interactive. So when you compare their revenue or when you compare the money they're making, it's not exactly a fair comparison. They're a little bit different. And I, I do think that that's a distinction that needs to be made when you're comparing them. It's not apples to apples, it's apples to oranges. The next thing is why everyone is talking about Roblox right now. Because anyone, including kids, can make a ton of money on the platform. Some developers can earn as much as $1 million in a single year. This article is from a 23-year-old that earns over a million dollars because he created a game on Roblox. And what does that do? It creates articles of a 23-year-old making a million dollars in a year, and that draws attention. That draws uh, other developers say, hey, I can make money by going on this Roblox game and creating a game, and it could potentially take off. That's big. That's going to draw some more developers to jump into this. If you're a 25-year-old and you know how to develop things, you know how to create things, you can jump on Roblox's platform, potentially become a millionaire in a, in a year. So that's another big draw. They do that by monetizing their games, of course. Although Ro Roblox and all its games are freely available, many kids buy and spend virtual currency called Robux. So that's the name of the virtual currency. One thing that the gaming companies always do, every one of them do this. If you buy something in a video game, you're never gonna pay dollars for it. That's not how it works because you have to break the link between how much you're actually spending and the value you're getting. They wanna break that link. If you know when you go on League of Legends or when you go on Valorant or when you go on a different game and you buy a skin that you're paying just $20 for the skin, all of a sudden you can be doing value comparisons. What else could I be buying for $20? Of course, games don't, don't want you to be making those comparisons. So they say you can be buying Riot points for $20 and then the skin is like, you know, 24,000 Riot points or whatever. They break that relationship so that gamers can't really do a fair comparison of how much money they're spending in these virtual worlds. And that usually leads to them spending a lot more money. Roblox is no dummy. They're doing the same thing. They have their virtual currency called Robux. That is where they break the link between the value you're spending, causing you to spend more money in the game. Uh, so Robux is the name. Robux is the name of the currency in Ro Roblox. They can use a program called the Developer Exchange, also called DevX, to convert Robux to real money. So if you're a developer and you're making lots of Robux, you can convert that to cold hard cash through this developer exchange. Uh, that's a pretty cool setup they have there. It's not just individual creators who are cashing in. Roblox Corporation itself is worth a surprising amount of money. Of course, we know this Roblox Corporation went public on Wednesday, meaning that it has opened up for sale of its shares. Its stock, ticker symbol RBLX, had a great first day starting off with a share price of $45 and then closing at $69.50 a share. The company ended up with a market capitalization of roughly $45 billion per a report from the Wall Street Journal. So that's what we know so far. We know that Roblox is a company, a gaming company, that's trading around $40 to $45 billion, which is a pretty lofty valuation. That puts them right up there with the, the very well proven, the long-standing gaming companies like EA Games, Take-Two Interactive, Activision Blizzard, those type of companies. $40 to $45 billion is a really... That's a good size gaming company. We also know that Kathy Woods bought 500,000 shares of the company. She bought it right on IPO. She was excited to add this to her portfolio. Now, before jumping into the comparisons of Roblox to the other gaming companies, I first wanna highlight and stress the differences first. So we know what's different before we go in and compare the metrics. Roblox is a social gaming company that attracts on average 32 million daily active users. That's a lot of active users. 32 million daily, not monthly, but daily. That's a very popular game. And then according to the SEC documents, there are more than 7 million active developers on the platform creating new 
3D experiences for Roblox. So they have 32 million active daily users, and then they have at least 7 million developers developing experiences for those users. And this is where Roblox really, again, it's different than EA games. It's different than Take-Two Interactive or Activision Blizzard. This highlights the difference. This is what Roblox spends their time developing. They have three pillars to their application. They have the Roblox, the Roblox client, which is an application that allows the users, the gamers, to get on and explore all these different 3D worlds. Then they have the Roblox Studio. The Studio is the application they build that has all the toolkits and all the tools for the developers to create these experiences for the client. And then they have the Roblox Cloud, the third pillar, which is their infrastructure platform, which facilitates all the, the social interaction between the platforms. So those three pillars, the client, the studio, and the cloud, that outsources most of the work to the people using the studio. Because unlike, again, EA Games, which they have great franchises, but they have to have hundreds, if not thousands of developers working on designing, working on developing these games. They're constantly employing a lot of people to do that. The same thing with Take-Two Interactive. They're coming out with something like 94 expansions to games over the next couple years, and Take-Two Interactive has to pay all the salaries of those developers to develop every one of those expansions or any new game. I know that something like Grand Theft Auto, those type of games that, that have an enormous development cost to them, it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars plus to develop a game like that. It's very expensive. Roblox doesn't do that. They don't develop these games. They develop the client. They develop the studio. They develop the cloud. All their development effort can go on improving these and then outsourcing most of that work of staying on the latest trend or developing the new experience to the people working on the studio. So again, it's more akin to something like YouTube than it is to something like EA Games. But having said that, I do think it's important to look at the valuation. We can't buy into a company without looking at how much we're paying for it. So let's go ahead and compare it roughly to just what some other gaming companies that are probably gonna be trying to enter in this field in the future. Now let's go ahead and look at some financial metrics. I think this is what's important to look at here. First of all, we can look at the revenue, which if you're investing in a growth company, the revenue and top line growth is the first thing you're looking at. How fast are they expanding their market share? How fast are they growing the amount of money they're taking in? Because most growth companies focus on land grab, they focus on growing very quickly, then they do on profitability. So if the first thing you're going to look at is profitability with a high growth company that's growing its revenue 40, 50% plus, you're usually going to stay out of that investment because most of them aren't profitable right away. Roblox is no different here. In 2018, they had a revenue of 324 million. That's not a lot of revenue. And they lost $88 million. So completely standard. They're growing the company. They're losing money while doing that. And that follows the trend of almost every growth company in the, the early stages. In 2019, they grew that revenue by 56% to a $508 million revenue. Their net income was negative 70 million, which was better than 2018. So they're trending in the right direction with profitability and they were having revenue growth. That is incredible. If you have a company growing revenue by over 50%, and they're trending to become more profitable at the same time, that is two very good metrics. But then in 2020, as you can see with this yellow graph here, the net income, the net income loss was, was exaggerated. It went from 70 million loss in 2019 to 253 million loss in 2020. It was down 256%. So even though they increased their revenue by 81% to 923 million, their losses also went up pretty substantially. Now let's go ahead and of course compare Roblox to some other companies that are similar. Take-Two Interactive. Take-Two Interactive has been a great investment. Shareholders of this company over the past five years have done fantastic. Since March 18th of 2016, this company's returned 386%. 386% since 2016. Now the company, just to point out the differences in value, the company's currently valued at a $19.5 billion market cap, which means you could buy two of these companies for the price of one Roblox. You could buy Take-Two Interactive twice for the same price. If we look at the revenue of Take-Two Interactive, it's much higher than Roblox. Keep in mind, Roblox's revenue we have right here last year was $923 million. So they hadn't cracked a billion dollars. 
Take-Two Interactive's revenue last year was $3 billion. So their revenue is over three times the amount of Roblox, and they're trading at 50% of the valuation. And that's the comparisons that we get so far. So another way to phrase this, just to highlight and put in context the difference in what you're paying for between buying a Take-Two Interactive and a Roblox is, again, we can highlight this number right here. Net income for Take-Two Interactive in 2020 was $404 million. Net income is how profitable the company is. Their total revenue was $3 billion, but their net income, how profitable they were in 2020 was $404 million. Compare that net income in 2020 to Roblox's revenue. Not Roblox's net income, just their revenue, and it's half their revenue. Take two, in the year 2020, had a net income of half of Roblox's revenue, their total revenue, and Take-Two Interactive is trading at half the valuation. Take-Two Interactive is a $20 billion company and Roblox is a $40 billion company. Even though Take-Two Interactive has three times the revenue and it has a net income that's half of Roblox's total revenue. That's just to highlight some of the differences there. What this tells me is investors in Roblox, if you're buying Roblox right now, you're expecting this company to grow insane amounts. Your, expect your expectations of the company are that it will continue to grow at rates of 60 to 70% year over year. The amount that it would have to grow to justify its current valuation today, the current valuation right now is incredible. It would have to grow really over 50% a year for year over year over year to be able to justify its current valuation being a $40 billion company that is losing money net income and it doesn't even have that high of a revenue. And just to put this in further perspective, I'll throw this graph on the screen here. This is the price to sales uh, estimates over the next 12 months of each of these companies based on their current growth rates. So assuming that Roblox grows a lot over the next 12 months, this is their next 12 months price to sales value. Roblox's is 19.4. The next closest is Activision Blizzard at 8.4, less than half the valuation even based off of Roblox's current growth rate. And then you have EA Games at 5.9 and then Take Two, which is the cheapest at 5.4. Now, the reason I show this is again, just to show the differences in expectation. So my thoughts on this and whether or not it fits into my portfolio, which is this portfolio right here, the Story Fund, I invest in companies similar to Roblox. They're companies that I think have high growth potential many of them do lose money currently. So Spotify isn't a profitable company yet. Uh, we have other companies like CLTD, not profitable yet. Uh, many of them are struggling right now to gain profits because they're not focused on it. They're focused on growth. And that's similar to Roblox. But in my opinion, as of right now, Roblox is on the watch list. It's not one that I'm buying into right now. I just don't believe in the future of the company enough to justify the current valuation and I think that there's better risk adjusted returns in different companies. So although Roblox is an intriguing investment, I'm not completely counting it out. I'm not saying that people are crazy for investing in it. I just think that it's a pretty lofty valuation. I haven't completely bought into the future of it. I think that it might have struggles to be able to justify their valuation down the road. So I'm gonna focus on my other companies. I think I have a lot of really good bets in this portfolio. Uh, a lot of good tech companies that I think are undervalued that are gonna grow substantially and they trade at what I think are more reasonable valuations. Now, moving on from Roblox, I wanna do a quick update on the Story Fund's performance. The Story Fund is my growth portfolio. It's the blue line here, and you can see the performance tracked over time. This is benchmarked against the S&P 500. So if I had deposited money into either the S&P 500 or my portfolio, this is the difference in outcome. A month ago, I was pretty high up above the S&P 500, but then of course we had the tech company sell-off. The high multiple tech companies sold off like crazy, and my portfolio dropped about 10% in total value. It went down below the S&P 500. So we did dip down below it, and then now we've recovered a little bit above it, but we're still really close. The S&P 500 has returned 11%, and then my portfolio has returned about 14%. So as of right now, we're still right neck and neck with the S&P 500. I don't know where it's gonna be in the next month, or really even over the next year. But I'm pretty confident over the next five years that I have a really good chance of outperforming SPY. So that's typically how this works. 
So I'm gonna keep tracking this at least every week and giving frequent updates. If you wanna follow it, just make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, but I am looking to the future on this. These aren't short-term holdings. This isn't day trading. I'm investing in these companies making concentrated positions because I do believe that over time, over the next couple of years, they'll begin to outperform the S&P 500 by more and more. So we'll see what happens. Now, the last bit of news I have to mention, which is very sad news. I was sad to read this. Netflix is testing a crackdown on password sharing. No, Netflix, don't do this. This was news that I did not expect to hear. Many investors in Netflix didn't either. The stock is down like 2% because a lot of people are nervous about this. There's reports that if Netflix does this, if they if they start making it so you can't share passwords, people's reactions are pretty bitter. They say, well, I'm just going to cancel Netflix. If I can't share it between me and my family and they live like down the block from me or whatever, I'm just going to cancel my subscription. It's not worth it to pay for the whole thing. A lot of people are concerned about Netflix. They're angry at this news and the stock price is suffering as a result. The reason that I don't believe that this will negatively affect Netflix as a company going forward is this word right here, testing. That is the key word here. You have to know when you're a company like Netflix or whether you're Spotify or whether you're Facebook, they run thousands of experiments and studies all the time where Netflix will have a thousand users in this demographic and then they'll find a thousand users in the same exact demographic. They will show them two different things and then they'll see how they react to it. And then they observe the differences. For instance, they might test things like a different display for their homepage. What do users do? They might be able to find what's a superior way to display their content or different thumbnails. They do testing all the time based off of different layouts and thumbnails and schemes to try to optimize their service. When Netflix is testing a crackdown on password sharing, if the results were everybody's just going to cancel their account because Netflix makes it so they can't share a password, Netflix in the group that they're testing would see the results, see that it's not a positive thing. They'd say, well, everybody just cancels their account, so we can't do this. They will only go forward with cracking down on passwords if the result is a net benefit for Netflix. If more people sign up for individual accounts, then cancel. That's the only way they move forward. So this can't be a negative thing. The only way forward with Netflix is if their test results show that this has a net positive outcome for Netflix. So as a consumer, I'm concerned that the test will show that this, uh, this is good for Netflix and they should make it so we can't share. They might have the test reveal that and then they might go forward with that direction. But as an investor in Netflix, I'm not worried about this because either direction they're gonna be taking is gonna be based off of testing. It's not gonna be a blind decision by the CEO. Reed Hastings isn't sitting there and, and saying, you know, I just have a gut feeling that we should just crack down on passwords and make it so people can't share accounts. And I don't know the ramifications. I don't know what this will do, but let's just do that. Let's just make it so people can't share accounts. He's not going to do that. Everything is going to be scientifically driven with data. They're going to move forward with what's best for the Netflix shareholder. What makes it so that people at a net outcome have the most accounts possible. So that's my, that's my thoughts on this news. I don't think it's a problem for the Netflix shareholder, but it could potentially be a sad thing for the Netflix viewer that's trying to share their account with family and friends. So that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the Weeble link in the description. I'll also pin a comment that has it. You get two free stocks for depositing $100. And there's no like, there's no catches. There's no strings attached. They really just deliver you two free stocks. I got the Canopy Growth Corporation. Maybe you'll get that one too. But either way, you'll get guaranteed two of them. Sometimes they give out the the like Google or a thousand dollar stock, most of the time they're worth about 17 to $30. So you can check that out. Also, if you're interested, there's the Patreon. It gives you access to a Discord community. I'm on it every single day, as well as thousands of active members. There's really a lot of active members. In fact, last night we were on um, Stock Chat, which is an audio chat room, and it was interesting to hear other people's voice in the Discord. So that's a lot of fun. You can check out the Patreon if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time.